Do you have thousands of important photos, videos, and documents scattered across your many devices or hidden away in shoeboxes? That is no way to preserve your family's history. Mylio Photos brings all your memories together in one place to be easily and safely organized and shared. To learn more about how Mylio Photos can help preserve your family legacy, visit mylio.com slash FTM. That's M-Y-L-I-O dot com slash FTM. Subscribe today and receive free gifts valued at $80. Your memories deserve Mylio Photos. Welcome to Family Tree Magazine's Best Websites Podcast. This is the podcast devoted to finding the best websites to help you with your genealogy research. I'm Lisa Louise Cook. May is National Photo Month, and the Ancient Faces website is one place where you can share and perhaps even find a photograph of an ancestor. And here to tell us more about it is Ancient Faces co founder, Daniel Penna. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for having us. Well, I'm really happy you're here because I've heard of Ancient Faces over the years and certainly checked out the website, but there are new people every day in genealogy, and we want to make sure that they know about these kinds of resources. So start us off. Tell us, what is Ancient Faces? Well, Ancient Faces began 23 years ago, so over half my lifetime. Um, And we began as a very simple place to share family photos. And when we say family photos, we mean those one-of-a-kind photos, those photos in a shoebox that you inherit when a relative passes or in a photo album with and without names. Uh, My aunt is a longtime genealogist, and she realized while doing the genealogy that, hey, we have a bunch of photos. We're missing some. Those relatives over in another state have them. This was a way that Back in that day, you would have to scan them in with a traditional scanner and a way to share them. And over the 23 years, we found that people, in addition to sharing family photos, wanted to share more about who people really were. And so we've evolved into a place where, of course, photos are a primary aspect of ancient faces, but it's more than just photos. It's a place to share family stories, your own personal memories, when I say family stories, think those stories that when you get together at Easter that we just celebrated, that you hear over and over again, a place to actually document all these family stories that become kind of family lore. So uh, of Faces is a place where we have what we call biographies. That is where people can collaborate and share everything they know about their ancestors, loved ones, friends on individual pages that we call biographies about individuals. And these are these can be ancestors, family, friends, um, relatives, loved ones. It's a place to share your memories and family stories about the people important to you. That's terrific. And I know that, you know, as genealogists, we're often sharing in some of the kind of big genealogy websites, you know, if we're, if we have an ancestry tree or we're on my heritage or something, but there are so many more people interested in, in a way, family history, even more than genealogy per se, who may also have photos and stories and biographies. So it sounds like ancient faces is maybe a place where you could go and participate, even if you're not technically doing genealogy, but you really want to be able to share those ideas and those photos. Are people making connections in that way? It, exactly. There's there's a couple points there. Um, Ancient Faces is a great way to get started with genealogy. Um, we believe very strongly that what we know matters. So genealogy is based on facts, right? Uh, a lot of government records, a, lo- a lot of documents, a lot. I love genealogy. I love the uh, detective bit of it. But Ancient Faces allows the everyday person who heard those family stories at family gatherings, who has their own experiences of interacting with individuals to very simply and for free uh, share that information. And what Ancient Faces does is connects people that also knew or know of those individuals. And what we found is by allowing people to freely share and collaborate around individuals, a lot of amazing discoveries happen. 
I can only imagine so. I mean, you just I can see that there's just this wide variety of photos and you might end up spotting somebody that uh, you recognize or be able to help somebody else identify a photograph. I imagine that when we get to the website, we want to start searching for photographs. How do people get started in looking things up and then maybe adding their own? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So it's 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 fairly easy to navigate. Although we're always working on making ancient faces better, we we all very, work very hard and we get wonderful feedback from our community. But you can start with a search, and if there isn't a match, what we'd like to say is start a page for the person that you're interested in. Even if you don't have so many details where you think maybe what you know about an individual isn't enough, just by showing that you care about somebody will connect you with others who also care about that individual. So in a best case scenario, we, you, do, you go to Ancient Faces and you do a search and you'll find a biography with 20, 30 people sharing about them, you know, their family stories, photos, they built a family tree you really start to get an idea of who this person was. But if there isn't an information on somebody, just take the effort, just a few moments to create a page about this person and share what it is you know. And even if it's just questions you have about this person, by, 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 by taking that time and just writing down, hey, this is so-and-so, I've been looking for this information for years, I, I just, I can't find it. It, it might take a week, it might take a couple years, but somebody somewhere cares also about this individual and will add to this page. And what happens is we'll alert you when new information is added and then the connections that are forged, some truly amazing discoveries can occur. Uh, one example is, uh, this happened a few years ago, but it just gives me chills every time I talk about it, is there was a woman who was adopted she was petitioning for her uh, mother's name. She finally got access to it. And she just did a simple Google search. And she landed on a photo on Ancient Faces. And it was her mother. And as you can imagine, she was in shock. She, she saw the photo of her mother for the first time. And, and the story gets better. Uh, <laughs> she contacts the person who shared that photo. And it turned out to be her sister. And this was one of those uh, cases where her sister said, oh, my God, thank you for reaching out. We've been searching for you for years. And they actually ended up getting together. So just by sharing uh, publicly, truly amazing connections can occur. Now, that's 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 a that's a fantastic example. But there's there's truly thousands of examples like this. Wow, that's an amazing story. And all of us, you know, I think I have people we're looking for or, you know, more information we're trying to find. And you really had a foresight years ago to use the power of the internet and how people can get on there and connect to kind of post those inquiries. It sounds like a, a big kind of almost a message board for genealogy. Very cool. Yeah. Some amazing things happen when you share publicly. You know, um, yeah. um, there are fantastic genealogy resources. We all know the big names. And um, rightly so, many of them are private. Um, and, you know, some things you don't want to share publicly, and that's fine. Um, but when you do share publicly, you find out the world's a small place. That might have been your great-grandfather, but it was also somebody's neighbor, somebody's business partner you know, distant relatives that maybe don't connect or don't have a subscription, you know, to some of the, the big organizations. They don't have access to everything that, you know, you've built as a genealogist. And just by sharing little snippets, you know, things that you feel comfortable sharing, you, you just unlock opportunities to discover so much from other people's perceptions. And yes, it was my aunt's foresight. Um, that by, hey, the internet's all about sharing, you know, let's share. <laughs> <laughs> You've got everybody, get, you know, curious and interested in and in thinking about getting involved. Do they need a uh, subscription or is this a free service? How do they get involved? Sure. Ancient Faces is free. Uh, the only thing we require is an email. 
being free, uh, we're able to do so by, by having advertising partners. And, you know, we uh, don't do all those scary things and ads that you hear about tracking and all of that. It's just banner ads. And we've worked with kind of all the big players over the years. The last few years, we've been exclusive with Ancestry. So we're very thankful to them. Um, when you when you register and when you favorite a biography or a photo, many of the ads disappear. Ads are wonderful, but uh, we don't want it interrupting too much with that experience of sharing. It's a very personal experience when you share about a loved one or a relative. So it's very easy to participate. You just sign up. You give yourself a username. We prefer when folks use their actual names, but sometimes if you want to use a pseudonym, that's fine. So yeah, it is a free service. and Well, and that's fantastic because it really means that everybody has the potential to connect and to participate. And I have to ask you a question because I know many people will be listening and they want to get involved, but they're wondering about, well, what if somebody posts something on a biography and, it, and they don't think it's accurate or it's even disparaging? How do you deal with that part of the, the contributions of the users? That, yeah, thank you for asking that. that. That's a big part of what we do. So we're a small team. We're very passionate and we work a lot of hours. Uh, there's six of us and actually four of us, our full-time role is uh, community support. Every bit of information shared on Ancient Faces is reviewed by a human. We review everything. We do this to maintain a family-friendly community. Um, it's very important to us that uh, when we share, that we respect other people. Uh, this isn't a place to, you can disagree with people in a polite way, especially today, mm -hmm. you know, what are facts? And with genealogists, uh, we can, even the best of us uh, can get things wrong. <laughs> so with biographies, we call them collaborative. And there's a couple sections that are collaborative. There's the biography section, which is all the facts. It's where did they go to school? Uh, it's what professions they had. Uh, there's the family tree section. This is where anybody can add and contribute. And you'll be alerted when people add additional information. Um, there is another section on a biography that are memories and memories are unique to all of us. And those cannot be edited by anybody else other than yourself. Those, those are our, those are our own unique treasures. There does happen disagreements and, uh, very rarely, but sometimes we are called in to, to, to kind of smooth the situation and, and, you know, we, we, we like to say we don't sugarcoat the past. You know, some things that we prefer didn't happen, happened. But there's ways that you can say that that are respectful and, and, and factual uh, versus creating arguments. So we, the community support is a very important part. Uh, we, we review absolutely everything shared to make sure that it adheres to our community standards. And I think that's the most linked to page uh, throughout, the, throughout the community. And uh, it's not something that we dream up, the six of us. This is, uh, of course, we lead it. Uh, but this is really a collaboration amongst the entire community. Um, for the longest time, we didn't allow um, pages about people who are living. But after all, we're all at the bottom of our family tree. So that's okay as long as uh, you, you want that page. And whenever there's any information about an individual and they don't want that uh, about themselves and they want that removed, we'll immediately remove it. Um, but that's rare cases where that happens. Wow, that's really good to know. My goodness, did you ever think that... Uh 20 years ago when, when you came up with this idea. And I'd love to have you just tell folks a little bit about how you came up to, with this idea because you did it with a family member. And and did you ever envision it growing to what it is today? Absolutely not. I, I uh, My aunt uh, is diehard genealogist. Uh, she still travels around the country to, to get access to records that, you know, haven't yet been digitized. And our family... We believe that our past matters. 
we believe that the people in our past matters and and we 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 don't really understand that you know when when we pass and the people who knew us passed away we become ancient history you know there's a tombstone if you have an author in your family maybe there's a beautiful obituary and and now thanks to social media man, many of us have online profiles but but our grandparents didn't have this there's generations of people who don't have online footprints and you know how, how do you represent an individual that's a challenge right because mm-hmm. who i am to my son is very different than who i am to my mother and and so um ancient faces is very much a family organization so i work with my mother my aunt is still involved community support is my wife's cousin um, we have two developers in Indonesia that are married. We're very much a family organization. We're not a big organization that set out to change the world. We just found ourselves in this position. And really, we started with a simple concept of, hey, take one of a kind unique photos and share them and see what happens. We never saw that this would, this would grow into a community of you know, almost 400,000 people that share things that are so important to them about people that they loved or people that they want to discover more about it. it, It's just become a a passion project that all you have to do is go to ancient faces and scroll through the feed to see what people are sharing. And it's, it, it brings you to your knees. There's so many different stories. One is this, this woman who is a coworker and she worked with her in, and I think I might get this kind of off, but it was the early nineties. And she shared a photo and some stories about working with her. And she, she, she visited this page and added comments to this photo o- over the years, a couple times a year. Eventually, the husband found this. And what had happened is her coworker had committed suicide. And she had had a lot of guilt that she carried in her life for many years that she didn't see it coming. And the husband found this tribute to her coworker, and they started dialoguing. And the husband said one simple thing, Lisa. She said, he said to her, listen, none of us saw this coming. Please don't hold this guilt that, that you didn't see it. And you could just feel immediately this weight, this pressure that she lived with for, for, for decades just disappear. There's stories like this that I, I never could have imagined being involved with creating a space like this and, and, and how it impacts people's lives. I, I never could have imagined. Yeah, it's interesting. I always say we all have small little bits of other people's stories. And ancientfaces.com is one of these places where we can go and bring those bits in a way to come and share. And we never know the impact we're going to have, but you certainly have had uh, a big impact through your work and through the website. I encourage people to go check it out. It's ancientfaces.com. And Daniel, as you mentioned on the homepage, there's uh, really easy ways to get involved and also some of these stories to inspire us. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on the podcast and inspire us to go try it out. Lisa, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad you joined me for this episode of Family Tree Magazine's Best Websites Podcast. I hope you'll check out the show notes page for this podcast episode. You'll find it at familytreemagazine.com slash podcast. And there you'll find more details on ancient faces. And while you're over at the website, uh, check out our free email newsletter. It's the perfect way to stay in touch with us and get a lot more free resources that'll help you with your genealogy research. You can go to familytreemagazine.com slash newsletter dash sign up or at the bottom of the homepage, just click family tree newsletters. I'm Lisa Louise Cook, and you can visit me over at my website, genealogygems.com and the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. Until next time, have fun climbing your family tree. <laughs>